So this week we're revising trigonometry and we're going to be looking at using trigonometry to find the missing side or angle in a right angle triangle involving two of the given two given sides. So here if looking at the angle involved here we've got theta so we have the right angle triangle but the other angle involved is called called theta and the side opposite it is called the opposite. The side next to the other angle is called the adjacent. And the hypotenuse is the longest side in a right angle triangle, which is also opposite to the right angle. So we know the ratios that sine theta, so sine of the angle, equals the opposite divided by the hypotenuse. Cos of the angle is the length of the adjacent divided by the length of the hypotenuse and tan of the angle is the length of the opposite divided by the length of the adjacent and we can remember these ratios by using the mnemonic SOCATOA so we can write down our rules we can write so -ca given the triangle so here we want to work out either the angle theta or x to three significant figures so I'm going to label the two sides involved so we've got 42 degrees is our other angle our second angle and that is next to it so we call that the adjacent and here 9.5 is opposite the right angle so it's the hypotenuse the ratio that involves both adjacent and the hypotenuse is our cosine ratio. So I want to work out the adjacent. So if we cover up the A, we can see that the adjacent, by rearranging the formula, equals the cosine of the angle here, which we'll call theta, multiplied by the hypotenuse. Subbing in our values, that means that x equals cos 42 degrees multiplied by the hypotenuse 9.5. So to three significant figures we can say that x equals 7.06 centimetres. In example two we have the other angle is 31 degrees. 4.9 is opposite the 31 degrees, so we'll label that O. And X again is opposite the right angle, so we'll call that H. So the ratio that uses O and H is our sine ratio. And we can see here that the X value is our H. So if I cover up my hypotenuse here in the formula, I can say that OK hypotenuse equals the opposite over s which is the sine of our angle theta so given that formula I can therefore make the substitution so I can say x equals the length of the opposite which is 4.9 centimeters divided by sine of the other angle so sine 31 And this gives me a side length of 9.51 centimetres to three significant figures. Finally, in this last example, we want to work out the angle. So 3.2 is next to our theta, so it's A. And 3.8 is opposite our theta, which we're trying to find. So we'll label that O. The ratio that uses O and A is our tan, that should be an A actually, so Sokotoa, is our tan ratio. So I want to work out the angle. So my formula is the tan of the angle, theta in this case, equals opposite over adjacent. Subbing in, we have tan theta equals length of the opposite, which is 3.8 divided by 3.2. Now because we want to work out the angle, we want the inverse tan. So 
tan to the minus 1 on your calculator. So shift tan will take you to that function. And then work out 3.8 divided by 3.2. And that will, should give you 49.9 degrees to three significant figures. So the area of a trapezium is add together the parallel sides, multiply by the height, and then divide your answer by 2, or half times h times a plus b. So here are our parallel sides. So we have a and b, and we need to work out the height. Right, OK, so I'm going to take this triangle here. So I'm going to take the right angle triangle, like so, with an angle of 35. And we know that the hypotenuse there is 4. And from this triangle, I can work out the height h. So the height here is opposite in the right angle triangle, opposite the 35 degrees, and h. So the two sides involved are o and h, which means we're using the sine ratio. So writing out the rule for the sine ratio, I have sine theta equals o over h. So sine 35 equals the opposite, which is lowercase h over the hypotenuse. Therefore, we can say that h equals 4 times the sine of 35. And working that out on a calculator, making sure it's in degree mode, will give us a height of 2.29 centimetres. Now, working out the adjacent, so taking the same right angle triangle, I'll call that A. So I can work out, well, I'll call it X actually. So we have X there and X there. So if I work out X, because it's an isosceles trapezium, then it will also be X on the other side. And subtracting 2x from 8 will give me the length of the other parallel side, b. So I can say, using the cosine ratio, so we've got a and the hypotenuse. So using the cosine ratio, I can say that cos 35 equals a over h. Now a in this case is x, and our h is 4. So therefore, x equals 4 cos 35, which is equal to 3.28. So from this, I can therefore say the other parallel side, so the parallel side b, is equal to 8 minus 2x, or 2 times 3.28 centimetres, which is 1.44. So B I know equals 1.44 centimetres. So the area of the trapezium is h, the height, which is 2.29, multiplied by the sum of the parallel sides, so 8 plus 1.44, all divided by 2. And if we work that out, it gives us an area of 10.8 centimetres squared to three significant figures. So in this question, Harry is in his bedroom window and is looking at the top 
of a tree. So here, straight line representing our tree and Harry is looking up at the top of the tree from there. The angle from the horizontal to the top of the tree is 40 degrees. So if he's looking up, the angle that he's looking up makes an angle of 40 degrees with the horizontal. So we call that the angle of elevation. Now the tree is 30 meters from his bedroom window. So we have 30 meters. One would hope that the house and the ground are perpendicular. And we're also told that the angle from the horizontal to the base is 10 degrees. So he's looking down. So the angle he makes when looking down at the bottom of the tree is 10 degrees, although it doesn't look like it in this diagram. But that doesn't matter. OK, so... Harry thinks the tree is over 30 metres tall. So if we look at the first triangle, so we have an angle of 40 degrees and the adjacent side there is 30 and we want to work out our x here. So the two sides involved are opposite and adjacent, which we know the ratio involved therefore is going to be TOA because it's the only one that has opposite and adjacent in it. So therefore, we can say that tan 40 equals opposite over adjacent. So that becomes x over 30. So therefore, x equals 30 tan 40, which will give us x as 25.173. So looking, so that's our x there, and we'll call this one y. So if I draw that triangle out now, so we have y, part of the length of the tree, the angle of depression there, so the angle made when looking down is 10 degrees, but is still 30 metres away from the base. So again, we have adjacent and opposite, so we're going to use the tan ratio again. So this will become tan 10 degrees, equals opposite y over 30. So therefore y equals 30 tan 10 which will give us 5.29. So therefore the height of the tree is going to be x plus y so 25.173 plus 5.29, which will give us an overall height of 30.4, or 30.5 metres to three significant figures. So Harry is correct. So here I've just sort of highlighted um, two words or terms you need to be aware of. You've got angle of elevation, so it's the angle made with the horizontal when looking up. And the angle of depression, it's the angle you make with the horizontal when looking down. So two terms you need to be familiar with. In this example, however, we have a ladder is placed against a wall. To be safe, it must be inclined at between 70 and 80 degrees to the ground. Is the ladder safe? Well, in this question, we need to work out what our theta is. So we've got the side opposite it and the side adjacent to it. So the only ratio that uses opposite and adjacent is tan. So if I write out the rule, I'll have tan theta equals opposite over adjacent. So tan theta equals opposite 5.8, that's an 8, divided by 1.5. Both units are the same. Therefore our theta 
is the inverse tan, tan to the minus 1 of 5.8 over 1.5. And I put it in the calculator like that, then you won't make any mistakes with rounding. So putting that into the calculator, so to get tan to the minus 1, the inverse tan, you just press shift tan, fraction button, input the data, and you get 75.5 degrees to three significant figures. So yes, ladder safe. The ladder is safe. Right, in this question, it says a regular pentagon is divided into six equilateral triangles. The diagram below shows one of the equilateral triangles. Calculate the height x of the equilateral triangle above. So if you've got an equilateral triangle, so if I draw out the equilateral triangle, if it's equilateral, then if that's 5, this side here is also 5. This angle here is 60 degrees. And we've been asked to work out what x is. So, by dropping the perpendicular, we bisect the base. So we end up with a right angle triangle, 60, and this side here is 2.5. And we've been asked to work out that, well, actually, we could just use Pythagoras to work this out. But as we're doing trigonometry, I'm going to use this side here, which is the opposite, this side here, which is the adjacent. So I'm going to use the tan ratio and say that tan theta, so tan 60, equals opposite x over adjacent, 2.5. So therefore, 2.5 tan 60 equals x, so therefore x, the height of the triangle, is 4.33 centimetres to three significant figures. I could try it with um, Pythagoras and see whether you get the same answer, you should, but just be aware whenever you've got a right angle triangle, first of all see, can I use Pythagoras? If you want to work out the third side of a right angle triangle, you can use Pythagoras. If there aren't any angles involved and you want the third side, definitely Pythagoras. If there are two sides and an angle involved, and that's all, you're not interested in the third side, so only two sides and an angle, then it's going to be trigonometry. So look at the question carefully. In this example, we're told that Beth is 1.6 metres tall and when she looks at a statue from 8 metres away, the angle between the horizontal and the top is 50 degrees. Beth says the statue is over 10 metres tall. So if we imagine here Beth, there's Beth standing and she's looking up at a statue. So we've got a statue here. We know Beth is 1.6 metres tall and she's looking up at a statue, top of the statue there. And the angle between the horizontal and the top, we're told, is 50 degrees. So that angle there is 50 degrees. That's the angle she's looking up from the horizontal. And we're told that the statue is eight metres away. So if I work out what this height is, I know this here is 1.6 metres, because that's how tall Beth is. I need to work out what X is. So again, we have O, A, and an angle, two sides and an angle involved. So we're going to use tan. So I can say that tan of the angle, tan 50, equals opposite, which is X, over adjacent, which is 8. So therefore, 8 tan 50 equals x. So x equals 9.53.
So height of the statue is going to be, let's spell statue. So the height of the statue is going to be the 9.53 plus Beth's height, which is 1.6 metres, which will give us 11.13, to 11.1 to three significant figures. Is Beth correct? Is the Beth so yet? Yes. Beth is also correct. The statue is more than 10 metres. You may pause the video if you like and have a go at the question and then check your answer afterwards. So we've got the vertices of a regular pentagon lie on the circle of radius 5. So here we've got 5 centimetres. It's regular, so all these angles that round a point are equal. So if I draw a triangle out there, so if I draw the triangle, we've got 5, 5, 360 divided by 5 will give me 72. So I know this angle at the top is 72. Because it's an isosceles triangle, I can then know that 180 minus 72 divided by 2 will give me an angle of 54. So my base angles here are 54. Both 54. Right, okay, so if I take that triangle now, the first question wants me to work out the perimeter. So if I take, work out what half the base is, Double it and then multiply by 5, or half the base, multiply by 10, will give me the perimeter. So I've got a right angle triangle. I've got 54 degrees here. That length there is 5. And I'm going to call the base X. So I've got A and H involved, which means that we're using cosine. So I know that cos 54 equals opposite equals adjacent x over 5. So therefore x equals 5 cos 54. So x equals 2.94. So the base of the triangle is going to be 2 times 2.94, which equals 5.88 centimetres. So from this, I know that the perimeter, so the perimeter is 5 times 5.88 which is 29.4 centimeters so that's the first part of the question the second part of the question asks for the area of the pentagon so I've answered the first part the perimeter so the area of the pe pentagon now the area of the pentagon is base times height so I need to work out the height of the triangle so if I take that there, I know that's 54. I know that hypotenuse is 5, and I now need to work out what y is. So I've got O and H. So I'm using sine, so. So therefore, sine 54 equals opposite y over hypotenuse. So y equals 5 sine 54. Therefore, y equals 4.05 centimetres. So now I've got everything I need to work out the area of the pentagon. So area of one triangle is base times height divided by 2. So the area of the triangle is base 
which is 5.88 times the height 4.05 divided by 2 which gives me an area of 11.91 So therefore the area of the pentagon is going to be five times that. So area of pentagon is five times 11.91, which is 59.5 centimetres squared. And there we go.